Welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed our first lesson. Now we're moving on to a new topic here, an introduction to variables. I'm sure you're all familiar with variables. You all took a math class, hopefully, uh, where we saw something like this, right? x is equal to 5. You see, variables are used to store information. There's a variable name, in our case, x, which we can arbitrarily choose, and then a variable value, in our case, 5, which represents the actual information that's being stored. See, variables allow us to label data with a descriptive name so our programs can be understood more clearly by the reader or by ourselves. It's helpful to think of variables as containers that hold information. So x is a container that holds a value of 5. Now to define a variable in, in computer science, we use the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. So this is, hey, assign a value of 5 to the variable x. So I mean, I could call our print function here, print, and I could print the value 5. And if I do that, we should get exactly what we expect. Prints 5, perfect. But what we really want to do is we should print using our variable here, print x. Now, there's a lot of times some confusion here. Sometimes students will think that this should print the letter x to the screen. But if we check here, what this is going to do is instead of printing the variable's name, x, it actually prints the variable's value, 5. And that's because variables are containers, right? When I say, hey, print the variable x, it says, Python, find the variable x, see the value that it contains, and print that value. This is very different than just printing the letter x. So if I put the letter x inside of quotations, this is not a variable. This is a, what's called a string, something that we're going to talk about soon. So if we run this now, we see that our letter x gets printed. Perfect. So we can store more than just mathematical concepts or numbers, though. We can actually store messages or strings inside of a variable. So for instance, I can overwrite my value of x here. Let's just say x is equal to hello world. And then I can call print, and I'll print x again. If we run this, see, we print our previous information, and then we print our nice hello world message here. Um, this is kind of bad, though. In fact, this bothers me because this is terrible naming convention. See, we can arbitrarily pick our variable names. We ideally would like our name uh, to name our variables such that their names are informative. So since here, maybe we're printing a message, right? We're saying, hello world. Why don't I call my variable message? And in my print function, the argument I should pass, instead of passing the variable x, I'm going to pass the variable message. This should work exactly the same. And in fact, it does. We see hello world being printed to the screen. But now this is a much easier code to read with informative variable names. The variable name here is message, and the variable value is hello world. So when I call the print function, I pass the function the argument of the variable name message, and it in turn accesses the variable value of hello world and displays it to the screen. We can now update the value of a variable by using the assignment operator. So now I'm going to say, let's make message equal to goodbye cruel world. A little sad there, but now if I print message, it should, let's check, it prints the value of message right here. When message is equal to hello world, it prints that on line 10. And then we overwrite the value by using the assignment operator to goodbye cruel world, and it prints it again on uh, our print call line 13. Let's purposely make a mistake now, right? So let's say here in, in line 13, instead of printing message, let's print um, Masag, right? We forgot the E. So if we do this, note, note the output here. When an error occurs in your program, the Python interpreter does its best to try to help you figure out where the problem is. Um, the interpreter provides a traceback when a program cannot run successfully. A traceback is essentially like a record of where the interpreter ran into trouble when trying to execute your code. As you can see here, it says the variable name, Masag, is not defined. And this is because our variable is, is named message. We actually spelled our variable's name wrong. Um, 
A name error occurs when an object's not defined. And we're going to use these error messages to help us debug our code. And so it's nice here. It tells us where the error occurred. It occurred in line 13. So if I come back to line 13, I can find, oh, right there, I forgot my E. And so now I can fill this back in. Um, in terms of like naming variables, there's a few rules and guidelines you should adhere to. First, variable names can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. They cannot contain spaces. They can start with a letter or underscore, but they should never start with a number. And we should avoid using Python keywords um, and function names as variables. For instance, imagine if I tried using a variable named print. So I say print equals, let's say, um, happy dance, right? And so now if I try to call print print, I'm going to get an issue here because I have assigned to the, uh, a, a new value to the print call. And so I've overwritten this original function that we discussed. See, and it says, it says here an str object is not callable. Don't necessarily worry about that error right now, but just know that when I do this on line 15, the print function no longer exists. We have overridden it. So this is a really bad uh, idea here, uh, and we should keep it, keep it out. So maybe I'll put a comment here using a hashtag, and I'll just say, bad idea to override built-in names. And then we can comment both lines out so that they won't run, but they still exist here um, for our purposes. So that's a nice use of comments. All right, this will wrap up our introduction to variables. Uh, I hope I see you in the next lecture.